Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, today we have something special for you. We are going to take a look at how to approach um, NLP problem, specifically text, text classification. And this video is going to be really very beginner friendly. We have just today started a new competition sponsored by Data Driven Science. And we have two people from Data Driven Science here today, Jan and Prashant, uh, who will be walking you through the Hugging Face competition platform a little bit how to make a submission, how to download the data set and things like that. And we will also learn a little bit about what data driven science does. And uh, if you go to the competitions page, huggingface.co slash competitions, you will find like we have three ongoing competitions right now. And the one we are going to talk about today is movie genre prediction in which you are given a data set with movie synopsis and movie title, and you have to predict the genre, but I'm not going to talk about it uh, any more than that. Uh, Jan, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, data-driven science? Yes, yeah. Thank you so much, Abhishek, uh, for the introduction. Um, yeah, welcome, everyone. Very excited uh, that you joined this uh, live stream here um, where we yeah talk about the movie genre prediction competition that uh, launched today. Um, I'm Jan. Uh, I'm the founder of Data-Driven Science. And to give you a little bit more context uh, what data-driven science does, um, we are an education uh, company and uh, we are focused on teaching practical machine learning skills. Um, and um, what we believe is that only through practice um, you can actually really build the skills needed um, for working as a data scientist. And although online courses, traditional online courses are great to build um, fundamental knowledge uh, in the field. At the end, you have to be hands-on and actually um, do things. Um, so um, yeah, this is what we do and our like product and our education uh, tool for that is the so-called data science challenge. And the ch challenge is very hands-on um, and we focus on specific um, uh, uh, um, topics, specific, mostly in uh, computer vision and natural language uh, processing. Um, and since we are uh, so like hands-on and, and focus on, on the practical aspect of machine learning, we also really like the, the competition, which is fairly similar to the challenge uh, we develop on data-driven data science. Um, but it is also like the competition is you're even like more on your own, less guidance, and you have to come up like with a highest performance uh, uh, model uh, to, to win this competition. Therefore, we are very happy to partner with Hugging Face um, and specifically Abhishek uh, to yeah create competitions uh, um, that uh, people can join and participate uh, to uh, yeah learn and uh, uh, compete uh, with others. Um, yeah, that's a little bit about um, the, the company and uh, why we're also excited about competitions because of that uh, practical aspect. Um, and if you want to learn more about data-driven science and our challenges uh, we run, um, just go to datadrivenscience.com. Uh, we also have a free three-day object detection challenge that you uh, can join um, anytime. Okay, yeah, um, I want to now hand it over to Prashant, uh, who is uh, working also for Data Driven Science, and uh, he will give a, a quick um, introduction um, and then go deeper into the specific movie genre prediction uh, competition. Yeah, so thank you, Yan. So I'm Prashant, and I'm a computer vision researcher and engineer so today uh, here i am going to sorry, so sorry to interrupt you president yeah yep. just wanted to let everyone know like if you have any questions please yep. ask in the youtube chat or linkedin chat or wherever you're joining from and we will be watching the questions and we will be taking all of them yeah sorry yeah, yeah. so so now proceeding with the movie genre predictions so here i'm going to uh, give you a small insight how actually you can approach for this movie genre prediction, how actually you can write a basic code for approaching for this problem. 
and uh, so very firstly let's go through with the movie jitra prediction so if we just quickly see a data set so here is the data set of the uh, this particular competition so in this data set we'll be having the three particular three main attributes uh, movie name synopsis and genre so movie name and synopsis are going to be the independent parameters that are going to be used for predicting the genre so this is the data set which you can download and uh, for downloading it very firstly what you have to do is you have to get your hugging face token so that you can get by going into settings and after that by clicking on access token and so from here you can copy it and uh, if i go to my client uh, cli so i'm presenting my screen So here in the command line interface, you simply have to type hugging face, CLI, login, and enter. So here you have to paste your access token, which you have copied from the access token part from the hugging face website. I'm copying and pasting it. And when I press, it, press enter, so it asks that, do you want to add the same as my Get credential, so I'll be saying no and pressing enter. So it says the token has been saved and login successfully. So this is how actually you can log into the hugging face to download the data set. So now moving towards code part. So this was the data set in which, as I said, two independent columns or attributes that are the movie name and and synopsis and the dependent parameter that is going to be our uh, prediction parameter also that is general. So now let's quickly move towards the code. So very firstly, we have to import few libraries that will be including NumPy. After that, we'll be importing pandas. Pandas as PD. After that, we'll be importing torch. Afterwards, for downloading the data set, we'll be using the data sets. That is, that is the library from the hugging faces data sets, and we'll be importing load data set from it. From it. After that, we'll be importing the sklearn. We'll be particularly importing the info metrics from the sklearn for evaluating. And uh, at the end, we'll be importing transformers that we are going to use for tokenizing for classification model. So for all of it, we are going to use transform. So sequence classification. After that, we are going to import auto tokenizer. So I'll, I'll also be explaining you guys what all these things so this is just the importing part so after that we are going to import training arguments yeah so that's all for the importing part now coming on to our preparing our data set so this is the most important part whenever we are working with any machine learning problem either we are working with the image either we are working with the text either we are working with the audio for all of them, we have to do some pre-processing, some data filtering, uh, some data which is null that we have to remove. So for that, uh, very firstly, I'm going to create a class. I'm going to name my class as the classification data set. And uh, afterwards, here I'm creating a constructor. First parameter should be self. Second parameter I'm going to pass into it is uh, data afterwards tokenizer. So data going to be equals to data self dot tokenizer is also going to be tokenizer. Afterwards, we are going to define a length function. And 
here we have to return the length of data. The words will be having the get. get item and inside that we'll be passing our so very first thing will be text that we are going to get inside it and it is giving error let's see so string self dot data and from inside it we'll be getting every item and from that so here i have put them okay. so from there we want synopsis and we want to separate it with our target variable that is going to be our general self dot data and putting here as the item generate so inputs is equals to so now we have the we have the text that is our synopsis so now what we have to do is we have to tokenize it and that tokenizing part is going to be taken care by this tokenizer so for that we have to create an object also so so here is the tokenizer object which can be utilized and uh, self dot tokenizer inside it we have to pass te text and max length we want our tokens to have as i'm putting the 20 as a value you can change it also so afterwards i'm putting a padding into my text that is going to be max length. And truncation is also going to be one of the parameter which I'm going to have. Yes. Afterwards, let's go to the IDs because here we are going to make a prediction according to the IDs. So input IDs and mask also. Inputs, attention, mask. And from this function, we are going to return input IDs and input IDs are going to be in format of tensor so for that we have to import it from torch IDs will be getting as the output and data type is going to be torch.long so another thing is going to be a tension mask That too is going to be as the tensor. So here is going to be mask, and the data type will be torch Afterwards, we are also going to return label. Okay, so here I have to put comma. Tables also we are going to return. So torch dot tensor and target is going to be a return value. And here also torch dot lock. Okay. So this is a so this is this class is for preparing our data. Now let's quickly write the training function which we are going to use. 
So let's define a train function. And here comes our data set. So very firstly, we have to load our data set. So data set can be loaded from the data driven science repository. And inside that, we have to type in movie generate prediction. And simply by this way, you'll be able to load the data set. Afterwards, what we are going to do is we are going to get our data set encoded. So df dot class class encode column. And inside that we want to pass in our target variable that is going to be general. Afterwards, we want to split our data set into training and testing part. So for that, so the data set has already the attributes train and test. Oh, sorry. So we particularly, very firstly, we have to split it into training and testing. Afterwards, only we will be able to use it. So very firstly, let's define it. DF train is equals to DF train DF test is equals to DF of test. So these are the data frames and temporary data frame I'm going to create that is going to be my splitting. So I'm going to split my training data into the training and validation we can call it as. So for that, let's split our train data. So the function which I'm going to use that is train test split. And my test size will be 20% of my whole train data. After that, that's I'm going to give the stratify parameter stratify type column and that is going to be my target variable that is general afterwards df train that is going to be my data and df validation that is going to be my test data which I have just built it. So here I could get it as test. So I hope so till this point everything is clear. If anyone has any doubt they can drop in their comments. We'll be taking them. So this was the part in which we were importing the data set from the hugging faces from this repository, which you can see here. And after that, so this is the reason we have, we have logged into the Hugging Faces CLI at the very starting of, at the very starting of uh, directly jumping into the code. So this, this is the training and test data. And here we have, we have split it in, into the validation. Uh, we have split it our train data into the train and validation. So here we can see our train and validation data. I hope so. Everything is clear till this point. Now we are moving yeah. towards. I think we have we have a comment from a viewer. So that, tokenizer. Tokenizer. Uh, so I think tokenizer, we are going to use the auto tokenizer that is available in the transformer. So for that, let's write auto tokenizer. So Prashant, I think I we have a comment from a user. So here we are going to use the BERT. So we can simply write BERT is uncased and we'll be using use fast parameter.
and the model now we have to use so this is just for the just the tokenizer which we have designed for a uh, bert model and after that now coming on to the model designing to the model so for that we are going to use auto model for sequential classification that too we are going to import pre-trained pre-trained and inside which we have to pass a parameter that is going to be same as BERT base uncased. So afterwards, now moving to the, towards the labels. So number of labels also we have to mention here. So number of labels is equals to is going to be our length. So this function which we have written here length, this is going to be giving us the number of genres. So let's see how actually we can do so. So length of df train and dot features and we are going to choose the genre feature for that we are going to use to string so after doing so so we have chosen our model that is going to be bird we have we have created a object for tokenizing also for tokenizing the data set as well now we are going to use this class that is classification data set so let's go for it now let's very firstly create the train data set so for that we have to call classification data set and inside which let's see what all parameters we have to pass so we have to pass very firstly our data set and tokenizer so here you can see data and tokenizer so let's pass both these parameters inside it so our data set is pf train because here we are creating a training data set afterwards we have to pass tokenizer afterwards let's do the same for the validation data set as well so validation data set afterwards same thing going for the validation tokenizer same thing for the test data set as well because for all of them we have to tokenize tokenizer and yeah so now here we have prepared with our data set means that tokens has been created by the tokenizer and the data is set is prepared so now write let's write the arguments which we are going to pass inside the inside the model for training it so for that we are going to use training arguments function so let's do so training arguments and inside which we are going to pass few parameters let's see so very firstly we have to define the argument of the model that is going to be model after that we have to define evaluation strategy so evaluation strategy so that is going to be epoch afterwards saving strategy epoch afterwards learning rate we have to mention so these all are the arguments which are going to be fed into the model at the time of the training. So I'm keeping it as the two into 10 raised power of minus five. Afterwards, we have to put the argument per device train batch size. So per device train That size 
that I'm going to put eight for now. And the same we have to do for the evaluation as well. Evaluation. And for the evaluation also, I'm going to put it as the week. Number of training epochs for which I'm going to do it. So that for now, I'm going to keep it as the one because BERT is quite heavy model. So it is going to take quite a lot of time. Afterwards, weights decay. So I'm going to put it as the 0 0.01. And afterwards, I'm going to put at the end, I want to load my best model. at the end so that I'm going to put as the true afterwards so the metrics on the basis of which the matrix is going to be designed so for metrics best models on what basis actually the best model will be decided so that I'm going to put it as the accuracy afterwards uh, there are a few more parameters that is report to that I'm going to put it as the none afterwards. Save total limit. Parameter also I'm going to put it as the one. So these are all the arguments which are going to be used for training. So now we are going to design our trainer. So for that, we are going to use the trainer class. So this is the trainer which we are going to use. Inside the trainer, let's see what all parameters we have to pass. So very first thing that we have to pass is model. So this is the model which we have defined. Afterwards, after the model, we have to pass the arguments which we have defined just now. Afterwards, we have to pass train data set. That is going to be our train data set, which we have defined it here. As you could see, after that, we have to give our evaluation data set. So evaluation data set will be validation data set. Afterwards, we have to put tokenizer, which we had designed tokenizer. And at the end, we have to put compute matrix. On the basis of which the matrix will be decided. Compute matrix and that too is going to be compute. So compute matrix is giving error. So this is giving error because we have to define a function that should compute the matrix as well. So for that, let's quickly define it here. So inside which the evaluation prediction will be the input. So very first thing will be the predictions and labels. They are going to be come out of the evaluation prediction and what all predictions we have got. We have to convert them into argmax so that we can get the get the output what actually is the genre which has been predicted by the predicted by the model and at the end using this prediction and labels we are going to compute the accuracy so here is the accuracy so for the accuracy we are going to use the matrix so this is the matrix which we have called it from the sklearn so the accuracy score we have to pass on both things labels and predictions and from this function we are going to return accuracy so 
so now we have defined a function so it should not okay so here i have to put e and here so now we have defined a trainer as well so now we simply have to call this trainer this trainer which we have defined it here so for calling it as for calling it for training so we simply have to trainer dot train simple now we want to do prediction as well after the training has been completed so for that we are going to use the trainer itself trainer dot predict and inside which we are going to pass on the test data set on which we are going to make the prediction so uh, yeah so now here we'll have all our predictions inside the spreads afterwards the spreads is all is is going to give the is going to give the probability of all the generates which any particular every particular record can have so for that we have to apply again argmax argmax inside which we have to pass on the spreads and access is equals to 1 so now at the end so so once we have generated the predictions we have to submit it also for submitting it for the completing the competition so here i am going to generate submission file so for that submission format is going to be i'll show you up so let's see very firstly how actually we have to submit it so just give me a second i'll be showing you how actually the sample submission should look like so that after that we can code it so let's see so this should be a sample submission file in which very firstly the ids of all the generates should be there and corresponding to that the generates also should be there so this should be our submission file format so for that let's code it and so very firstly we have to create a data frame inside which the id should be there ids and so for that ids we can simply go for the df test inside which we can get the ids and corresponding to that we also want to have the generates as a column so generates are going to be reds which we have made the prediction so now coming to the converting this data frame into the csv file so i'm going to select all of it and generate the words i have to apply generate dot apply small function let's see what we are going to do so here what we have to do is we have to convert all the integers so this so all this spreads whatever values we are having so they are going to be into the integer format so that we have to convert into into strings so that we can get the generate what actually is the generate in a in a textual format in a string format so let's see how actually we can do so so for that simply we have to have the features from that i'm going to get from the df train so features and inside that i'm going to go inside generate afterwards int to string and my input for this function is going to be x so i think uh, everything is good
okay so here i've done a mistake yeah so now it is good so now we can export this export this data frame as a submission file submission.csv we are going to name it as and the index should be false okay so now pretty much we have created a trainer we have created a matrix compute matrix we have created our data set preparation for preparing our data set we have created a class so yeah now we can start our training so for that let's quickly define our main function i'm going to call train function observe inside it so that it can call all the things okay so now we are good to go to start the training so here is my terminal i'm going to type in python 3 and name of my file is generate classification Okay, so it has downloaded the data set. Here you can see. Okay, so we decay this. There's a small error. Let's quickly go to it. Weeds decay. Also, while um, Prashant okay, is debugging, so um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the chat. Prashant, so do you hear me, by the way? It. Rerun it. Okay, it seems like uh, he's not hearing us. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, please ask them in the chat. Okay, metrics. Okay, again, here it should not be metrics, it is metric. So now here you can see, okay, batch encoding, this some problem in batch encoding, line number 21. Okay. So now here you can see the trading has started and here for my system it is showing 24 minutes it will be completing in 24 minutes so before that let's directly jump into the results how actually it will it will show you to show it up to you you can wait for you can go for the training you can go for you can wait for 25 minutes 25 30 minutes and see how the results looks like for you you can go for the other other approaches as well for the ensemble uh, ensemble models you can go you can combine few models so that all you guys can do and submit it in the competitions and and submit your submission files also into the into the by creating a new submission so before that let's directly see how actually the results will look like so i have already done the training so this is how actually the results will look like. So here the learning rate will show you up and losses will also be show you up. And here, here you can see evaluation loss is 1.6 and evaluation accuracy, which I have got for BERT model that is 40.9 and all other parameters also you can see 
for the training steps, training loss, and number of epochs that we had only one. Probably you can go for more epochs if you have a better system and good GPU. So yeah, so here we have the sample submission file. So now let's quickly see. So here the training is still going on. It is going to take probably now it is showing one hour. So let it continue and let's see how actually we can submit a submission file which you have just which you are going to creating at the end of when this thing is going to be completed when the training is going to be completed so it will look something like this it will have the id attribute and the general attribute so let's see quickly how actually we can submit so here I'm bringing my screen. So here by, by going into the new submission, very firstly, you have to go into the competitions page. Here you have the overview and here you can see the top data set, public leadership, private leadership, and here new submission. Here you can click, you have to click it here in new submission. Afterwards, you have to copy your token and put the token here in this space and after that after that here you can drop in your submission file or here you can click and sample submission here i'm submitting it and upload submission and it's submitting it's processing it So it will so it will take a short yeah so here you can see the successful submission and i have only four submission left for today so for seeing my submissions which i have submitted so i can go to the my submissions i can directly put in my token and fetch my submissions so currently it is showing error but yeah you can see all the submissions which you have done so here also here you can see the submission which you have done you can download it and yes so i hope so most of the things how primary things how actually you can create your model how actually you can code the tokenizer and how you can create a how actually you can pass the arguments so i hope so uh, almost all the things are clear to you if there are anything which we can answer you can ask us yeah thank you so much prashant uh, that was a great tutorial so we do have a few questions we will take now and uh, you were getting an error in my submissions page because you're that, that's your first submission and that's still processing so if you try again you won't get there uh, but anyways if you get errors let us know. There is also a community tab where you can discuss and interact with other competitors. And we will also share the code with you. So you can run on your own machine or anywhere you want. So the first question that I want to take is the advantages or disadvantages of using trainer inside a train test loop. So it, it totally depends on you, what you want to use. If you're using trainer, um, things are much simpler, but you don't have a lot of flexibility. And if you're going for flexibility, then you can use your own train test loop. So I think both of them are going to give you similar results. By the way, Prashant, are you able to hear me? Yeah, yeah, now I can hear you. Okay, great. So I think the next question is for Prashant. Okay. Um, do I have to do, do have... something special to use my laptop GPU to train? So uh, very firstly, you should have have CUDA, Codian in. So these are the basic things which you should have. And other than that, you should also have, as you would have seen in my screen, that it was showing that TensorRT is not present. So you should also have the TensorRT engine. Uh, so that would be one of the thing by which you can fasten up your training process. Yeah, so Great. I hope so I have answered your question. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, it's uh, all the basic stuff. I, I would just use yeah. Anaconda to make things a little bit simpler and 
you always have a mess with nvidia cuda drivers anyways so good yeah. luck <laughs> it's similar to the notion of uh, gated fusion certain aspects in offsys speak certain aspects title influences do you want to take it prashant yeah so yeah sangeeta as you said so it's correct as you said because some aspects are covered by the for the movies we can't we can't predict the genre of the movie just by just by seeing the name of the movie and some of the movies we can predict very easily but synopsis gives us a quite a good overview and uh, combining the titles with the synopsis this gives us a uh, quite uh, means handleability and by this by combining both of these things we can predict the genres uh, quite good and with a good accuracy yeah hopefully let's see yeah. so uh, yeah so interesting thing is in this tutorial today we only use a synopsis so yeah. using title is left as a homework or maybe it will improve your model maybe not so yeah let us know um in terms of class <laughs> is the data set balanced yeah the data set is balanced yes more or less it's balanced and even the public and private splits are balanced so um it should be a good competition in terms of uh, uh we shouldn't have much shake up of in in private and public leaderboards but we never know um okay another question uh is can i use generative models in case to experiment with prompting based strategy so do you want to take it yeah yeah sure so uh generative models here particularly this is just the classification part and uh, the approach which we discussed in which we were simply tokenizing it and uh, and uh particularly we were encoding all the all the synopsis we have not used the generative model here so i'm not sure we can use the prompting based strategy here or not but you can definitely try it out and share it with us yeah but if it just, works just, or, i will yeah. i was just thinking about it and i think it's a, it's a, it might be an interesting approach so if you want to yeah. maybe you can generate uh, lots of synopsis and uh for different genres and try to train a model so you will yeah. be enhancing the training data so maybe it will work i'm i'm not sure because i haven't i haven't tried it but maybe it will work yeah probably that can be the case of the creating the synthetic data and trying to train mix it with the trained data which we have given so probably that can work yeah definitely so test data set does not have labels one data set class throw an error so test data set do have labels but they are fake labels so all of them have been labeled as action so it won't throw an error um uh, let's take the next question which architecture you suggest for a system with lower computational power so like in my opinion the data set is not not very big so you can also use collab and you can use bigger architectures like even dberta or oberta uh, i don't know if the large versions of those will fit but today we tried bert and that should work quite well for a system with low computational power and uh, yeah you you can you can just use collab if you want to do that go with bigger architectures do you have anything to add prashant yeah so um... so if you want to use uh, this particular data set or any data set and you have a low computational power so as one thing has been suggested by the abhishek you can use the collab other than that you can use um, use escalon escalon is having quite a quite a good uh, trees architectures uh, uh, naive base models also we have for the classification you can also try the svm so it is one of the one of the good model for the classification of the text so yeah these are the few architectures these are the few models which are available uh, which you can try it out on the low computation power 
Definitely. So um, I think you can also try to combine these traditional machine learning approaches yes. with deep learning approaches, and maybe it will perform much better. Um, so I think uh, that's all the questions. Uh, where can I find the code example you just shared? Uh, we will share it in the community tab in the competition in the competition page, and you can find the link to the competition in the description box. And let's take another one last question. So I think this question is for Jan. Apart from specific genre prediction, what is intuition that's tested in the competition? Apart from using a text classification problem. Um, yeah, I think with like any competition, right? Um, what what we try to do, and it's a very oh, it's a fairly simple example, but at the end, it's also about business problems you want to solve, right? You always have to think about like whatever machine learning problem you're working on. There's a technical aspect, like building a model, um, making good predictions. But as a data scientist or as a machine learning engineer, at the end, you always have to think about a business problem you want to solve, especially if you work at a company. Um, this is what's all about, like how can you make an impact to the business? And I think for this competition as well, and in the competition description, we highlighted a, a, a few ideas why this is relevant um, um, to know uh, or to be able to do a uh, movie genre prediction. But uh, for me, just to highlight the fact, like whenever you're working on, um, on a problem, really think about the business and the business impact. And I think that's, that's something um, we also want to try to do with this competition and uh, any other competition we're going to do in the future. Even if you go back, like our first competition on Hugging Face was around ship detection. It was an object detection competition. And even there, uh, we highlighted the, the, the problem that this uh, can solve in the real world. So that would be my answer to your question. And th just to add, like from my side, it's all about having fun. Have fun in the competition. Discuss a lot with other competitors. It's like from my perspective, is bringing the community closer, and you will get a lot to learn. You will learn a lot of new things uh, by by approaching the problem on your own, and also uh, from what other people share. So yeah, go have fun, and there's some really cool prizes prizes that you can win in this competition. And if you have any questions please feel free to reach out to us uh, using the community tab or to Jan or me or Prashant directly. Um, and this video is going to be available later on. So you can, you can watch it anytime you want. So thank you everyone for joining. Jan, would you like to add some closing remarks? Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah? Uh, yeah. Also from my side, uh, thank you so much for your interest. Um, in this uh, uh, competition. Um, we really hope, uh, yeah, you, like Abhishek said, you have fun with this competition, you learn something new, you practice your skills, uh, you learn from others, um, you connect through the community. I think there's a lot of important aspects um, uh, to, this, uh, to this competition um, besides just uh, b building a model. So uh, best of luck uh, with this competition. Um, yes, use the community tab uh, in case you have questions. And yeah, I also want to say thank you to Prashant. Um, this was uh, a really good uh, walkthrough um, of the coding uh, uh, part. So thank you so much for, for doing this. And of course, thank you Abhishek for all your support um, and also Hugging Faces support um, that we're actually able to do those competitions on the platform. Um, yeah, without Abhishek, it wouldn't have been possible to build this on our own. So um, it was a team effort and a good collaboration. And hopefully we will be able to, yeah, provide more competitions in the future. But now for the next six weeks, please focus on the movie genre prediction competition and try to, um, yeah, build good models and, and uh, submit uh, your, uh, your models and your ideas. Thank you so much.
Thank you, Jan, and thank you, Prashant, for yeah. the awesome tutorial. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for joining. And we will see each other next time. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.